Next, Josh Rubner. Oh, excuse me. Um, Josh, yes. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, as some of you, or as all of you probably may have guessed, uh, my name is not Nadia Hijab, but she is a very good friend of mine uh, and a close <coughs> colleague, and she asked me to convey to you uh, her very sincere apologies for not being able to be here and moderate today. She was overcome with uh, some sickness last night, either food poisoning or the flu that prevented her from getting out of bed today, unfortunately, but I did see her this morning and she gave me the notes uh, that she wanted to use to open this conversation here today. And because we work so closely together and because I've heard her make these points so many times, hopefully I can convey uh, a proper sense of her message. Nadia and I believe that there is no doubt that the strategy of boycott, divestment, and sanctions is one of the most effective strategies that we as civil society have for achieving Palestinian rights and for ending Israeli occupation and apartheid. A few reasons why this is so. Number one, it's led by Palestinian civil society. In 2005, more than 180 Palestinian civil society groups came together to issue a call for global campaigns of boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel. Palestinians from the occupied territories, citizens within Israel, and refugee groups comprise this call. The other reason why the BDS movement is so effective and impressive is that it is very context specific. In other words, it can be both a global campaign and a very local campaign. So for example, when we're confronting multinational corporations like Caterpillar, like Motorola, that are profiting from Israeli human rights violations of Palestinians, this can be done within a global context because these corporations sell in every country around the world. But it can also be very specific and also contextualized to the needs of a particular group. So, for example, if you have a church that wants to divest its stock from corporations that are profiting from Israeli military occupation of the 1967 territories, that is good. That fits within Palestinian civil society BDS call. If you want to run a broader boycott campaign against all Israeli corporations or against any uh, state-backed Israeli initiative, that is too part and parcel of the global BDS movement. So it's really flexible in terms of the strategy uh, involved. So there's really something for everyone to engage in here. Another reason why it's so important is that it enables our global movement for Palestinian human rights to achieve victories. And make no mistake about it, the BDS movement has achieved substantial victories over the past five years. Multi-billion dollar corporations have, uh, I'm sorry, multinational corporations have canceled multi-million dollar contracts with Israel as a result of global civil society pressure through the BDS movement. This is a substantial victory, and this is something that's causing Israel's political leaders uh, increasing concern. Finally, it's important because it's very crucial that this is a rights-based approach rather than a solution-oriented approach. We hear all too often that the only way for Israelis and Palestinians to resolve their conflict is at the negotiating table. The only way is through a two-state resolution to the conflict. And we hear these things spoken by our political leaders ad nauseum. Well, this is not necessarily true. There are many different ways to approach peacemaking. And the good thing about the BDS call is that it unites people within a political framework without having to choose a particular solution to the conflict. So it can encompass people who support both a two-state resolution to the conflict and those who support a one-state resolution. Nadi also mentioned that BDS is, of course, just one of many strategies to employ to achieve Palestinian human rights. Of course, as Miko mentioned, there is a growing and important nonviolent Palestinian grassroots movement and a popular struggle underway against Israeli occupation. Of course, we heard from uh, um, Ambassador Afif at lunch that there are diplomatic strategies underway to achieve Palestinian human rights <coughs> in the UN. There are legal strategies being employed around the world. People who were injured and families of those who were killed on the flotilla 
like we heard from Furkan Dolan's father today, are employing legal methods to try to uh, sue Israel for accountability. And of course, we've seen also with the Nakba Day protests and the Naksa Day protests that there is a growing cross-border mass mobilization in support of Palestinian human rights. However, Nadia cautions that for BDS to be successful, this particular strategy should not overshadow the actual goal of the Palestinian struggle. And we see in many cases that BDS becomes a mantra rather than a means toward achieving Palestinian rights. But the three goals that are spelled out in the Global Palestinian Civil Society BDS call are, number one, freedom for Palestinians from Israeli military occupation, justice for Palestinian refugees, including the right of return, and three, equality for Palestinian citizens of Israel. These three goals are captured beautifully in the new logo that's on the website of the Palestinian uh, National Committee for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, called the BNC. Uh, and their movement, uh, sorry, their website is bdsmovement.net. And we must repeat these three goals endlessly to make sure that everyone knows that our struggle for Palestinian rights is about freedom, justice, and equality, and that BDS is a strategy to achieve these goals. Can I have a few more minutes now to say my piece? Okay. Thank you. Now I'm putting on my, my other hat as Josh Rudner. Um, I'd like to start by saying that I'm very glad that last night ADC performed What's in the Honor by Malik Jandali. I wrote a statement on Friday which I'd like to read just a small piece of, and if anyone's interested, I have uh, copies of the full text of my statement here. I wrote that Malik Jandali's hauntingly beautiful composition, What's in the Anna, is an anthem for the Arab Spring and movingly encapsulates the desire for freedom that animates the spirit of millions of Arabs to risk their lives to protest nonviolently against anti democratic and tyrannical regimes, often backed fully by the United States that have for far too long deprived Arabs of their human rights. After the downfall of apartheid, former South African President Nelson Mandela once stated, quote, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. I would very humbly add that after the inevitable crumbling of Israeli occupation and apartheid, Palestinian freedom too will be incomplete without freedom becoming firmly implanted throughout the Arab world. Very good. I have copies of the statement here if anyone would like to see the, the whole thing afterwards. But what I'd like to do uh, in, in the few minutes that remain to me uh, is to talk about the S in the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, which is something that often gets overlooked. And we, as the U.S. campaign to end the Israeli occupation, which is a national coalition of more than 360 organizations, including ADC, uh, we have a number of boycott and divestment campaigns against particular corporate targets that you can get involved with if you go to our website, which is endtheoccupation.org. We have campaigns against Caterpillar, against Motorola, and our member groups are running very creative campaigns against corporations like Ahava, which is a uh, cosmetics manufacturer based in an Israeli settlement in the West Bank, uh, TIA Kraft, the giant pension fund, and also Elbit, the Israeli arms manufacturer, which is also building the wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. But what I'd like to focus on is the S, because if we're going to achieve Palestinian human rights, we need to change U.S. policy. And the ultimate form of change that U.S. policy must take in order to secure Palestinian human rights is to sanction Israel for its gross human rights violations and for its misuse of U.S. weapons to commit atrocities against Palestinians. So we have an ongoing organizing campaign, and I know that some of the resources have already been circulated uh, earlier in the, in the presentation. We have some resources that we use in conjunction with our ongoing organizing campaign to try to uh, impose sanctions on Israel for misusing U.S. weapons. And we know that we're a long, long way off from actually getting that done. But we believe that we have to continue organizing in this fashion and that it's imperative that we all do so. Uh, BDS can often be taken on a very theoretical and abstract level, but in actuality it's about organizing on the ground and talking to 
fellow people in your community to convince them of the rightness of our cause and asking them to take action. So that's what I'm here today to do, is to provide you with an opportunity to get involved with our campaign to sanction Israel, to end U.S. military aid to Israel. We have a couple websites that we've established in recent years to help you make the case to people in your community about why this is a bad policy. We have a website, aidtoisrael.org, which documents on the state level, the congressional district level, the county level, and the city level, all across the country, how much money your community is giving in weapons to Israel, and what that money could be used for instead for unmet needs in your community, such as health care, affordable housing, green jobs initiatives, education, all the things that we need to get this country back on track. So it's a way of putting forth a bread and butter argument to people in your community who may not know anything about this very important issue and how they're implicated in it. And number two, we have another website called weaponstoisrael.org. And what we did was we took very detailed information from the State Department, from the Defense Department, and uh, analyzed it and crunched the data to come up with some very shocking figures. Would anyone like to take a guess at how many weapons the United States has transferred to Israel over the last decade? Go ahead, just shout out a guess. No one wants to guess too high or too low. How many? 50? Two million? Two million? Ten million? The answer is more than 600 million weapons have been transferred from the United States to Israel over the past 10 years. 600 million? 600 million weapons. This, in, this includes, this includes uh, ammunition and support equipment and so forth. This was purchased with $24 billion in taxpayer subsidies over the past decade. And perhaps most, perhaps most shocking of all, if you look at the actual line items, you realize the extent to which the United States is complicit in every single aspect of what the Israeli military does to the Palestinian people. For example, our statistics uncovered that just over the last three years, the United States has provided the Israeli army with enough bullets to kill every single Palestinian in the occupied territories five times over. Just in the last three years. And of course, we all know that the grave consequences of this policy exist in reality for Palestinians. Over the last decade, taking data from the Israeli human rights organization, B'Tselem, we found that 3,000 Palestinians who took no part in hostility were killed by Israel, often with these very same U.S. weapons. So when we talk about the BDS movement, we need to talk about ending military aid to Israel. And we need to take upon ourselves the responsibility for educating people in our communities and organizing them to end this terrible, terrible policy, which, as Amnesty International stated in a report after Operation Cast Lead, is literally fueling the conflict. So what I'm going to do as I wrap up is send around some sign-up sheets, because we can't do it here alone. We can't do it from Washington. We cannot talk to the politicians and convince them that what we're saying is right if we don't have numbers behind us. So what we need is we need everyone in here to sign up to be an organizer with us, to educate people in your communities about this policy, and to work with us to impose sanctions on Israel and to get this weapons flow cut off. So I'm going to send around a sign-up sheet, and when you sign up, we'll send you an organizing packet. We sent around uh, models of some of the things that we'll send you, which includes postcards to the president, educational materials that you can give to people to educate them. This is the kind of work that we need to be doing on a day-in and day-out basis to change public opinion in this country, which is always the first step in changing policy. Thank you. Thank you, Josh.